sweet bro so you get the opportunity to go over to england um obviously with the whole covid situation you know not not many people can you know travel and all that sort of thing so who are you gonna take with you my bro um definitely taking my family with me eh? and, and the whole of tokoro but mm. yeah, everything i do man take my son and my wife and my daughters like why are all with me but oh, yeah. man, i might say that one again because eh? yeah. like i just said like, 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 yeah like, like i was like obviously you can't no one can go yeah. and travel who are you gonna take with you bro <laughs> I should have put my son on my bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sneak him over. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It is Wednesday today, um, and we've got a special guest in for our podcast for this week. Um, if you can introduce yourself, bro. Uh, kia ora, kia ora. My name is Daily Manu. Uh, I'm born and bred here in Tokoro. And yeah, I'm the owner operator of Loyalty of Royalty Clothing. Nice, it was nice. So, how long have you been in the industry, my bro? Um, well, the idea started about 2014-15, and I um, produced my first garment in 2016, so yeah. Nice, bro. So what, what do you do, bro, like in terms of the gear that you put out? What, what kind of gear do you put out? Uh, so it's a street clothing brand, and um, yeah, I'm owner, operator, and designer. I do everything by myself, yeah. Nice. So it's, so it's called Loyalty Over Royalty? Yeah. Uh, how did that name come around, bro? Um, it's just like a lifestyle I've been trying to live by since I was for a few years now, and so I'm just keeping mm. loyal to yourself, and... And um yeah, staying loyal to who you are as a person and, and not letting the, the ruling and royalty of society dictate you who you are. Yeah. Nice bro, nice. So uh why clothing brand, my bro? Why why that? Uh just growing up, eh? Like seeing like the likes of Michael Jordan and, and the Jordan brand mm. and um being a big big Michael Jordan fan, like you know, you chuck on a pair of Jordans or something with the Jordan brand on it, man, you, you feel a bit special. Yeah. So yeah, yeah just um yeah, just chasing that for myself and, and wanting to put out a brand out there that I can represent and hopefully other people will want to represent as well. So yeah. Uh, it must be a mean feeling having people like wearing your your stuff around, eh? Yeah, yeah, nah, big man, massive feelings even just still seeing it to this day. It's been a while, but um yeah, especially overseas and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's one of the places overseas that you've seen uh, some of your gear? Um been been in the Cook Islands and all that and yeah. a couple and got a couple in China with one of the bros over there that, um Seen this guy in Fiji wearing wearing a t shirt next to a villager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, That's pretty cool, eh? So, so if there's anybody that kind of wants to get into, I mean, making their own label, their own clothes, bro, what qualifications did you need, bro, to start up your business? Uh, me personally, I didn't have any qualifications whatsoever. But then later down the track, I found it helps to have some qualifications and some certifications. Yeah. So um, I enrolled in a um, business management course and a uh, and a manage money management course. Yeah. And um here in Tuk? Yep, here in Tokoro at the, um down at the Wananga. Mm. Um took advantage of a free course, so that was really cool. Yeah. Yep. Helped out a lot too. I mean, and I guess it must have not been um what do you call it, like easy to kinda of start your own your own business. Um what were the processes that you had to take or the steps and all that kind of stuff that you needed to take to get to where you are today? Yeah, so it was like it all it all come from an idea and yeah. then um and then believing in that idea and feeding that idea. So um putting you know, putting your your um talk to the putting the mahi into it and um, getting the gears needed, um, getting the knowledge needed and practice. Yeah, practice. Um, I, I've always liked drawing and stuff like that, so I had that on my side and it was a, that was a big, big plus. So I just took my love for drawing and all that and then, mm. yeah, started designing T-shirts and stuff like that with um, the help of some digital programs and stuff like that, yeah. Nice, bro. Did you know how to use any of the digital stuff? Like, obviously, this time of age, you know, it's a lot of computer work and you're yeah. designing online and all that sort of stuff. Is, did you know all that stuff or did you have to learn it? If so, where did you learn, bro? Um, had to learn from scratch and um, a lot of help came from my bro, Jacob Martin. Yeah. Yeah, so he, um, we had the gears and all that for about a couple of months and we just, he just come over, locked the door, man. We just sat there until we figured it out and, yeah, that's how it all started. So, um, yeah, big shout to the bro who helped me stay focused and helped me... Um, yeah, get to know my way around the tools and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm, mm, nice, bro. So what's what's the plan, bro? What's the plan for for the lower tier royalty? Um, definitely expansion. We yeah. um not too sure if that's in the case of um putting our gears out there into shops and stuff like that. I I quite like still being home based and doing everything myself. Um, we're touching on men's accessories and stuff like that, like mm. jewelry and um handcrafted jewelry and stuff like that, or beads and stuff like that. Yeah. So um. Little little expansion here and there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see the hats going there. Look nice, bro. Your hat looks <laughs> good. And you wore one the other day. So, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, we've been doing this podcast, what? <laughs> this is our fourth, fourth time, time trying lucky. to get it right because 
Uh, there's always Technical been some sort of difficulties on the other side. So, like, seeing you come in wearing your different clothing and your different hats, yeah. bro, it's pretty cool. Ah, cool. It looks pretty cool, bro. Um, on your journey, um, you know, we kind of only see the positive side and, yeah. and the highs, I guess, of your um, of your success and your journey. Bro, has there been any of those dark times where you've just felt like, you know, you've had enough or you wanted to kind of give up mm, um, yeah. during no, your time? There's been plenty of that, eh? Like, when I first enrolled in business... I was in there for a few months, business uh, management, I was in there for a few months, and man, I chucked it all in there, I gave up, and I um, struggled really hard off that, and, and questioned whether I still wanted to do all this and whatnot, um, about half a year later, re-enrolled and picked myself back up, and got back on the horse, man, grinded it out, Qu- um, graduated from there, and then took on the second course, the money management, graduated from there, stuck to it, and got established and all that, but yeah. man, you still run into some, some hiccups, and some dark days, and still questioning whether it's worth it and all that, and then... And then, man, I don't know, you'll just get a customer that does a bulk order and it makes it all worth it. And, and yeah, still seeing people wearing it, man, it's still big. Mm. So you so you jumped onto a course first and then you failed or yeah. you, you stopped doing it? Yeah, failed uh, myself, really. I eh? just yeah. let, it, let the board drop, yeah. And then and then what clicked, bro? What made you think, nah, i got to go back on and reapply, do this course again? And then what you know motivated you to finish it the second time around? Um, definitely just the support from my wife. Mm. Yeah, and at the time we were... We were just about to become a family, so having a son on the way was definitely something that, that pushed me to carry on. And, and um, the foundation of the label changed to build a foundation and build something that he would maybe want to one day carry on when he's old enough. Yeah. Mean, bro. So mean. definitely some, some big push there. And I guess for anyone that wants to start their own business, my bro, what's some advice that you could kind of give to um, those young entrepreneurs? Um, just if you're really passionate about it, just give it 100 a every every single day, grind it out and... Just um, stay true to yourself and, and your label, whatever it is, or whatever you're making, man. Just stay true to it, how you how you envisioned it from the beginning, and don't let anyone dictate that. Yeah. Nice, bro. So, what drives you, my bro? What motivates you? Um, family, bro, always. Yeah, family yeah. and friends. Mean, bro. So, obviously, we're talking about uh, your brand and your label or your business. You're a businessman. You're a family man, but you're also... Um, got something else going on for yourself, bro. Um, <laughs> anyway, can you share that with us? Yeah, so um, for those who don't know, I was born of cerebral palsy, spastic lobeplegia, and it's a um, medical condition where, um, well, well, for me personally, it only affects my lower half of my legs and stuff, like, and the, the muscle spasms and stuff and tightness. Mm. So um, that makes me eligible to play for the physical disability rugby league team New Z- and represent New Zealand. So um, we've had the opportunity to given to us to go over the World Cup this year and um, mean, bro. Yeah, playing the first ever physical disability World Cup alongside the Men's and Women's World Cup too and, and the Wheelchair World Cup. So yeah. you're the first, will you be the first yeah, part first of the first New Zealand? First ever team and there's like seven different teams from around the world, yeah. Mean, bro. So that's some history right there, eh? Yeah. That's some history. Cool. So you're yeah. part of history, bro. No that pressure, no pressure. How do you feel, bro? How does it make you feel, man? Uh, it's still surreal, eh? Like, you know, we haven't been able to make many trainings because of COVID, so yeah. I haven't been around the boys as much as the rest of the team has, so it's, it kind of hasn't sunken in yet. But when I when I do catch up with them every time and, and when we Skype online and stuff like that, man, it, yeah, it really hits home and it's like a reality now. And Mean. Man, it's just, time's going really slow because I'm so excited. Yeah, 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 hard, bro. So you get to go to England and... And represent mm. your country, yeah. um, bro. I couldn't imagine um, what it must be like, you know, to finally put some boots on. And it was yeah. that like, bro, your first time? Because you've been around the game for a long time, yeah. uh, watching obviously your brothers played uh, rugby league and all your friends and all that growing up. You know, you've got the opportunity to play now. And how was it, bro? Your first game, bro. What was it like? You know, finally. Yeah, no, it was it was surreal, man. Like I still think about it to this day. Like just mm. just the small things, like you know, taping up your wrist and stuff. That like, putting the boots on, like you said, and and being in the change room and those butterflies and that man, and the yeah. nerves, yeah. A couple of toilet breaks before we ran out. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> but nah, it's, it's massive, bro. Like I, I get it now. When when all the you know you go there, watch the boys run out of the tunnel and stuff. That like, you don't see what goes on behind the shed mm. doors and stuff. That like. yeah. yeah, hard. But nah, definitely a mean buzz, bro. It's it's um, life changing. Yeah. Awesome, bro. Awesome. So um, we're talking about your design and all that sort of stuff as well. So you had the opportunity um, to design the Pacific Sharks jersey. Is that right? The yeah, playing strip. Yeah. How yeah. was that, bro? Uh, that was that was massive in itself, eh? Because it's such a um, monumental club, mm. and it was their um, 50th year anniversary. So it yeah. was a pretty pretty big deal for them and, and me myself too. Because um, yeah, my my father and and my uncles all played for the Sharks. My older brother and stuff like that, and not being able to play physically, it was definitely um, a big honor to to put the money stamp on that um that mm. club in a different way. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of just growing now that you've um, from that, so you've also designed the All Stars yeah. jersey as well. 
Yeah, so uh, my first year of PDRL, I got picked to play for the Poly All Stars versus the World All Stars. Um, they saw the design I made for the Sharks that year, and a few months later, they asked me to design our two jerseys. Mean, so that was, bro. Yeah, mean. Another, another big honor. Yeah, so there's like three three jerseys under the belt so far. Must be a mean feeling to be able uh, to design the jersey, but not only design it, but get to to wear that strip <laughs> as well. Yeah. So we um we went to the first game for the Sharks when they wore our wore the jersey that I designed, and it was it was pretty big, man. Like. Heaps of emotion and stuff like that, seeing yeah. them run on and wearing it and then and then to get out to and, and have Coach hand me this jersey that I designed, man, it was really big, yeah. Um, sweet bro, so you're going over to England at the end of the year for the World Cup. Um, obviously, with the COVID situation, you know, people can't travel. Um, so who are you going to take with you, bro? Not physically, but, you know, in your heart, on your sleeve, bro, who are you taking with mm-hmm. you, my bro? Yeah, no, I'll definitely take my family, take them everywhere I go, my wife, my son and my daughter, but... um. Man, got to represent for Tokoro on this one eh, and take them to the world scale. And just because of all the support I've been getting locally and stuff like that, and um, just on that note, just a uh, big shout out to Gym Fifty Six too of their sponsorship of membership and stuff. That's really helping my journey. Nice, so, bro. Um, yeah, really appreciative. And all the businesses around town offering help to to get me there and stuff like that. So definitely be um, we're in the eighty six on the wrist tape when I'm over there. Nice, mm. bro. Nice. How many games, bro? How many games? You got a draw? You know who you're playing and all that stuff. Um, it's New Zealand. Australia, Samoa, Scotland, uh, two England? other teams, I think so. Yeah, England, England and England. maybe one more. I could be wrong, but um, whoever is in our final, hopefully it's us, will be playing the Kuna Razor for Samoa and um, Scotland's men's, men's game. World Cup. Yeah, World Cup game. Mean, bro, mm. mean. No, bro, honestly, bro, appreciate you for coming in. Thank you for your time as, uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> again. Fourth time, uh, lucky. fourth time lucky, fourth time lucky. But if, I guess if anyone wants to follow your journey, my bro, is there anywhere we can follow uh, your journey or we got vlogs coming out yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, I've come up with the idea to make a Facebook page to um, keep everybody informed with my journey, how it's going, like the ups and downs of it, um, everything in between. And it's uh, Man's on a Mish on Facebook. So you just go on there and it's like um, a green and grey little logo and you'll be able to find me, yeah. Um, drop vlogs here and there and diary entries and my training regime and stuff like that. Awesome, bro. Mm. Awesome, bro. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, on your page too, because I do follow it, you have uh, what you d- one thing that you do every week, and that's your motivational quote. So what's your yeah. quote for, for this week, my bro? So every Monday, I try to drop, try drop some motivation. And um, today, man, it's just one word, it's just brotherhood. Mm. Just um, me, myself, I've been feeding my, my own um, well-being with, with being around like-minded brothers and all that and, and like today brother it's an honor to be here with you so yeah brotherhood bro nice so, my bro yeah. look bro all the best from us here at the ymca to you on your journey my bro yeah. hopefully we get to um see you come back with the with the gold yeah. and the trophy bro but other than that bro it's a huge achievement anyways my yeah. bro you've really done yourself proud and your whanau so um again my bro all the best Jeez. um and we yeah, are looking forward to your journey my bro cool uh just before i go bro I just give a shout out to the bro, little boy oakley he's um He's seen me on TV and stuff like that, and he's he's affected by cerebral palsy quite like me, and he's um, just started his own little league journey down south. So, yeah, big shout out to Oakley and his family. A shout out to you, Oakley. Talking about um, he saw you on TV, bro, is there a link there for anyone who might have missed that episode um, or, or where we can find um, it? Yeah, I, th- I think Unbreakables it was the TV series. It's still on TV and on demand. Yeah, so it's um, we got a first, second, and maybe a bit of the third episode on there, yeah. Mean. All right, Fano. So if you are watching this and want to get a little bit more of an understanding of um, the journey that Daily's been on, jump online on the TV demand dot com, yeah. TV and Z, um, and it's called Unbreakable. And, and check out the journey, man. It's awesome. It's inspiring. Um, and like the bro said, you know, he's been reached out by Young Oakley. So yeah. again, bro, awesome, awesome. I hear that you're doing, my bro. Uh, awesome, inspiration. Brother. And bro, all the best. Ah, thank you, brother. Thank you, YMCAT. Sure. Cheers. Can we talk?